Hello and welcome! It is Gauntlet of Greatness time once again. I'm Randy Bueller, joined by my usual partner in crime, Shadow Detella. How are things? Everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. We're playing Popper. This season has been a lot of fun. Neither Shadow or I had played any meaningful amount of Popper before this, so we're kind of diving in, figuring things out. Thanks once again to Alex Ullman at Gathering Magic, who hooked us up with a bunch of good deck lists. And we're in the top eight. We're playing the right-hand side of the bracket. So the match we're about to watch is Mystical Teachings versus Affinity. This, uh, you know, couple of... We played a practice match. It was pretty interesting. We actually split the two games. I feel like the edge goes on the, uh, on the teaching side, but we'll see. Um, here's the teachings deck. So a bunch of ways to draw cards. And oh my god, are there a lot of ways to kill creatures. And then four copies of Mystical Teachings st stitch it all together. This is this is grindy. This is old school control. This is you know eke out incremental advantage. You know picking up your Radiant Fountain with your Demir Aqueduct and just if you can stay alive, eventually you'll win the game. And win the game is like one copy of Curse of the Bloody Tome to deck them, or. And this actually happens, Evancar's Justice with buyback, while you're gaining enough life to not die to it. Not, not much in the way of victory conditions. There is one random A-bomb as well. Um, cool deck, though. I mean, it, it won one round. I've certainly been enjoying playing it. Um, Affinity is, is kind of mostly what you would expect. You do get to play with all the artifact lands. Um, you do not get to play with Cranial Plating, though. That card's banned. And, of course, Skull Clamp is uncommon, and Ravager's rare, so you don't get any of the true bombs from the modern version of this deck, but you do get the artifact lands, and that means just, like, Enforcers and Frog Mites and Atogs and Hover Guards and Thought Casts, you know, the actual mechanic affinity is very good in this deck, and you know what? It's, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of potentially very explosive cards. Now, in the practice games we played, you did not, in fact, we're not able to explode out of the gates through my, all my removal, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I was able to, to board my way through you with surprises. That won't happen in the real match, but let's see what let's see how it goes. All right, I'm going to mute you on Skype. Good luck. Talk Sounds good. The match. Good luck to you. All right, here we go, and gameplay. All right, he's on the play. He's kept seven. I don't think we can keep seven land and rewind. Much as I might, I enjoy land and picking up three. It's really eight. It's really seven land and a rewind, not six. But one rewind is not going to survive the first four turns. All right, this is a little slow, but I think we have to keep it. Um, I think I do put that on top because, oh, this is my only black mana. Weird. Like, Aqueduct means I don't super need land, but I can't do anything on turn two. If I take the island, then my turn two play can be either Think Twice or Counterspell. Whereas, if I'm drawing off the top, then I'm probably playing an Aqueduct on turn two, which sounds kind of bad. I'm going to put it on top. I don't know. I like land more than most people. So, there's a chance that's a mistake, but... But yeah, if I if I don't get to do a spell until turn three, I feel like being able to counter spell on turn two. Well, my after my turn two, powerful, especially when I think twice as as a fallback. That's exciting. Oh, frog might sure. He's just gonna galvanic blast my face while the coast is clear. I like it. Seems right. Wow. Crazy. He's down to one card in his hand. Okay. Now I kind of wish I'd pushed the island, of course, because I drew an untapped black source. It had to be an untapped... Well, it had to be a black source for me to regret. There's only three swamps in the deck. Four gain of life lands. So do I need to edict this frog mite? Like he's thrown two galvanic blasts at my face. I feel like...
Killing his only creature is good. I don't want to take this two damage. Sure. Uh, I can kill that now, which is good. I think I want counterspell mana. I feel like I'm going to take this three so that I can hold up counterspell slash think twice. On my turn, I can Agony Warp and pick up one of the lands with Aqueducts. Uh, it doesn't actually help me keep up Counterspell. I'm taking three. I want to have Counterspell for a second main. He's got one card in his hand. We have a counter spell and a think twice. Should win from here. Nine life should be enough. Actually, be playing this with today, Bob. I think I actually essence scatter this, right? Um, I guess I can think twice first. Let's see if I draw something that changes my mind. have ways to kill creatures. I'm not, I'm at, you know, single digits. And he's clearly digging desperately, so. Okay. Now we can kill things much more reliably. Two, three, four. Wow, I could just tap out for A-bomb. Worst case scenario, he's got a Galvanic Blast. Oh, I guess worst case scenario, he's got, somehow got Atog Fling as his last two cards. But I don't have a Counterspell anyway. Yeah. Worst case scenario, it eats a Galvanic Blast that doesn't get fired at my head. Run it! I mean, I, I recognize that I have Capsize Buyback, but like, what am I doing with Capsize Buyback? I'm pinning his mana at plenty. Can you kill a Twisted Abomination? Or would you like to be on a four-turn clock? I'm okay with either answer. Yeah, he's cycling, digging. Came up with Galvanic Blast. Fair enough. I mean, I wouldn't have played it that way if I had another land, but with no other land in my hand, like no access to any other land, that's the right way to play that. So, about that four turn clock. How about 14 turns? What do you say? I don't like the way he's gone thoughtcast into thoughtcast.
sure. Can't do anything about that. Fair enough. Okay, so now I can disfigure an edict. I mean, I can capsize this guy, but I don't have enough mana to capsize and kill the forger, right? Two, three, four, five, six. I only have six mana. And I definitely am not interested in taking four, so... I don't know. It feels slightly like a waste of a disfigure, but... I love the tempo of just clearing his board and I'll get to untap with a backwater next turn. I'll have seven mana and I can actually flashback Chainer's Edict to kill the next big thing. Well, the next thing. Wow. Hitog, huh? Hitog resolves. That's obviously bad. I have two, three, four, five, six. I can completely tap out for Chainer's Edict. That will get me killed. I have to rely on capsize here. 17 cards, no mystical teachings, less than ideal. He randomly found an answer to my A-bomb on the turn I gambled, less than ideal. Yeah, he went fuck, he's, he's, he's beating, he's drawing more cards than I am, that's the problem. Like, I'm supposed to be the mid to late game card drawing deck. And he's just outdrawn me by, like, a bunch. Yeah, 30 cards left in his library. He's seen half his life. Oh, I'm, that doesn't count. I forgot about Curse. He's not going to sack anything. If I capsize buyback, we're down to one thing. If I capsize buyback, then he then he kills me, right? Yeah, he only has to eat four artifacts. Lame. Wow, crazy. Yeah, I don't think I can. I don't think I can recover from this. Yeah, I can kill one thing, bounce another. I'm taking eight in all worlds. Oh well. Did not expect that game to slip away. You know what my problem was? <laughs> I drew two victory conditions. Why do you want to win the game? <laughs> A-bomb and curse were terrible there. Yes, I do care enough about fling that I'm going to bring in Dispel. Um, rewind seems terrible here. I guess recoil is not great. It's not bad on the, the living equipment. Yeah, you can say never cast Twisted Abomination, but like nothing about the game changes if I hold it. Like the game plays, I, I, he's up a Galvanic Blast is what happens. 
All right, what else am I taking out for this stupid dispel? Is it recoil? Eh, recoil seems okay. <coughs> Might be the A-bomb. Let's take that guy out. Actually, he's better than the T. He's better than the curse. Yeah, I'm never winning. I'm never winning a game on Kurt with curse. Sure. No blue mana. I've drawn shockingly little blue mana. Given there's only like three swamps in the deck. I keep drawing swamps, not islands, but whatever. Uh, take the lead. 22. It's going to eat the germ eventually. Unless I top deck exactly recoil, that's going to happen. Ugh. Relic is annoying. Not happy about Relic of Progenitus entering my life after sideboarding. Wow, he kept a one lander, but it's got a Relic. Lame. Relic's really good against me. Oh, I should update the scoreboard, right? Affinity's up again. God, Relic is super annoying. Double think twice yet? Almost. I think I have to counter spell this. We did it. All we had to do was spend five mana main phase, but we managed to build our own divination through stupid Relic of Progenitus. No problem. Now we're tapped out and we just die to any kind of ATOG fling shenanigans. There's the ATOG. Can I interest you in playing your last card? Making my recoil awesome? Please? Alright, if I pick this up, then I have four mana, which does not let me do recoil and counterspell.
Man, losing chain energy agents is kind of a big deal. No, can't interest you in sacking anything. It's too bad. Wow. I don't think Echoing, Day, Echoing Decay was going to get those, huh? I do not like the way this game is going. Like, I can cast Teachings. It, it, I think I have to recoil the ATOG. That was a good draw. I was going to have to teachings for it if I didn't draw it. Teachings for that or exclude if the mana worked. I feel like I have to leave up Essence Scatter. If he's going to slow roll the Atog, then I'll teach him for Disfigure and stuff. But yeah, he has to go for it. And I do not have Teachings mana. <laughs> ah! Is that good enough? So I'm at 8. I can block and kill one Forger and take 7. He Flare Husk beats me? Is it really Flare Husk equip the only thing between me and winning with this Twisted Abomination? Oh, wow. Three, four, five, so eight mana. Yeah, if I A-bomb, he'll figure it out. I'll only have two mana up, one of which I probably want to regenerate with. He makes Hoverguard a 4-4 and he kills me for Xaxes. So we're not doing that. Instead, we're going to rely on the power of Mystical Teachings. I'm guessing Agony Warp is how I'm going to get out of this. Kill the Flyer, take five. And he'll have to blow his relic or let me teachings again. I don't think I can do better than Ag anymore. I can randomly gain life. Three life for each card. One, two, three. Gain nine is not the right answer. Yeah, I think it's Agony Warp. And if I top deck Radiant Fountain, then Twisted Abomination on defense actually has a shot. I basically need to draw either 
a way to gain two life up to five where I can take a hit or a way to deal with one of these. If I draw the right card, this, uh, never mind. Now my outs are much slimmer. Oh, 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 right after he wiped out the graveyards. Thanks, deck. <sighs> See if we can intimidate him into not attacking. I don't think it's going to work. Not going to lie. I don't think it's going to work. Oh well, it was fun playing teaching spot it lasted. This is crazy. I've lost both these games in the mid game. Well, I guess I lost I lost both these games. First game, he just drew a bunch of thought cast and outcarded me. This game, the relic meant that I basically could never get card advantage and I just wasn't able to stabilize without access to those extra cards. Interesting matchup. It actually feels close-ish. Like, it's beatdown versus control, right? The beat, if the beatdown decks are any good, they should beat the control decks. I guess this is not the fastest of the beatdown decks. This is almost a mid-range deck for Pauper, it feels like. Cool match. Good games. Wow. Well, that didn't go as I expected. Uh, the first game felt good, though, because I kept drawing a thousand cards. Yeah, but... yeah, you outcarded me. You just, yeah. like, you drew all your thought casts, and I drew none of my card advantage stuff, and you just... Eventually, I, I drowned under a wave of card advantage. Normally, yep. that description applies to the games the teachings wins, but <laughs> not that time. Oh, man, that second game, it was so sketchy. I'm like, do I keep it? I've got a relic. The relic's insane. It's so Oh, it's good. so good. Like, your cards are so much less good. Yeah. They're just over-costed. Yeah. That's <laughs> what your cards are, if I can get that thing into Agreed. play. Yeah, good match. The yeah, good games. Both decks seemed like legit good decks. I enjoy teachings more, but I'm gonna, I expect I'm going to lose that matchup when things go wrong. Yeah. I think... I, I still kind of feel like Teachings is favored, but I thought I was favored when I lost last week, too, right? <laughs> the last two matches have just been me losing with decks that felt like they should win against beatdown decks, because that's what happens. One of the, a lot of the power of a beatdown deck is that it just, any kind of hiccup from the opponent's point of view, or you, or you yep. get just like the perfect curve, and you can beat a lot of things that you're not supposed to supposed to be yeah, my creatures are just large right like two yeah. cast two a two drop four four a free four four like the two twos are the weakest right but they're still in there for uh uh protection from make me sacrifice changers edicts yeah yeah yeah. chat suggesting i could have grimog angler that's actually not a bad suggestion just have a random one mana five five v12 mm -hmm. that sounds pretty good sure 